My people are warriors. Two. My people are warriors. We have Makarata. When the anthropologists came to Anamla, they took, as they took a precious pearl or a precious jewel of the Nile in Anamla, those profound elements, those profound artifacts that they took is part of who we are. Projects for the Makarara actually emerged out of discussions over the last few years with Dr. Bumbara, who had been researching his own Kupapingu legacy in museums in Australia and overseas. And so he was my mentor and my teacher, and he also was instrumental in the concept of the Makarara the analogy of the, the, the peacemaking um, with this event here, this forum, to bring people from those museums that hold Millingimby cultural heritage. Unfortunately, Dr. Gumbala passed away a year ago, and so this Makarara is also to honour his vision and his work in singularly going and looking and finding all this material that's held in at least 12 countries around the world in over 50 museums, galleries, libraries and archives. We would like to know how dads, you know, he made his footpark to the world. And here we are now, together, on his ground. The word Makarata is um, a spearing. Our people used to spear and by their Spear. Today we are looking at the Makarata words. It's something that can bring bring the Magaya Rome back to the to the future. Magaya Rome is a bringing peace to the country and to the people everywhere. The Magaya Rome is something that we can work together and bring all the um, artworks from the old people back to our country. I've been humbled by this. This is the start of the water. Even though the... It has been a long struggle. Long struggle. You... Without you, we are not going to make this. Without us, you are not going to make it. It's about coming together with our expertise, with our learning. And it's time to um, unbury what we have buried. Because it's a trauma, it's a sickness in the spirit. that we've held this past weekend, bringing the past into the future, is part of our research project about collecting at Melangimbi. Our objective was to bring as many directors, senior curators from institutions around the world 
I hold Mailing Gimby collections to come here and be on country in order to have discussions with people at Mailing Gimby. The immense community uh, support for the event covers a whole range of people who've worked very hard to make it happen like the Rangers, like ALPA, like RJCP, the school, the art center. And I think because of this community involvement, the guests that came here were very impressed with the standard of how they were treated, their accommodation, all the things that happened. And because of that uh, degree of you know, feeling welcome and wanting to talk to people, they have responded. My understanding of what the Yongu have been trying to communicate to people from museums is that they want to engage, they want museums to be a, a partner in the processes of culture and, and not, a, not an opposition or, or, or not a fence to get around but someone that you, you hold hands with and, and find a way to do it together. There is something very special about coming together and listening and talking about how we might better work to advance the interests of this community, especially in respect of all the collections that are held in various institutions around the country. You know, those things that are held in museums and galleries and universities, they're really things that are community things. They're things that have a life here, uh, an important life here. And we have to work more creatively, more openly, I believe, to make sure that those things live in this community. They don't simply remain in the institutions where we are looking after them. And that's only possible if we come together and we are open about the possibilities. Well, I'm project. I'm going to go to the project. I'm going to go to the project. i the culture is, not just to Millingenby, but to the whole of Australia. Uh, certainly I, and I'm sure everybody else who has, has taken part in the Makarata, will go back to where we come from and do whatever we can to strengthen our relations with Millingenby and provide support um, and also benefit from the relationship. And in the case of the Rangers, uh, I've already started talking with them about opportunities that they might have um, to come to Melbourne and see some of the things that we do with um, ranger groups from communities, indigenous communities across our state. And I think those learnings could prove very, very useful for the future. Working with Yongle people is a challenge for yourself. You have to be willing to change yourself. You have to be willing to understand that now this man here speaks four languages and English is last. He doesn't understand five syllable words, well under words. He can speak his own language like this, bang, or someone else's. But you have to speak, if you want to create understanding, you have to change the way that you work with people. If you want to work with Yongle people, change your thinking. Yes, it belongs to them, this stuff. It belongs, it's, their, it, it's their knowledge. But you have to respect them enough to invest in that knowledge being shared for your, the benefit of your institution. It's not just something you can go, oh, ceremony man, give me 10 hours of your time. You give it to the art centre, 
You give us time. We give it to know our young Lord. You respect them for being senior law people. You give us time in our own way to deal with the information you're giving. And we want all of it. I think one of the things we need to get our heads around and go away with is, apart from the data, like how could we actually expand our custodianship and our idea of ourselves as institutions to kind of help a living, breathing, dynamic culture do its work and see museums as part of that rather than as the keepers of it. It's singing the works to life because that's trying to get them to their mind that just because it's a, in a box, because we've got lots of boxes at the moment, when it comes out, it comes back to life and that community and old people should come in and be able to sing that, so sing that song or connect with that work or dance with the work or whatever it needs to, you know, like it's actually still, a, you know, so what you're saying is that living culture is still breathing. I think we just become control of someone else's story and then what happens to that story if it gets lost or... So I think we just got to keep singing it, hey? Keep making it and making sure the objects get heard. <laughs> It's been an extraordinary experience and a real coming together of we, the people from outside Millingimby and the people of Millingimby to better understand each other uh, in such a way that we can do work together in the future and um, strengthen our both our own museums for example that we work in and also strengthen the uh, Millingimby community. It's been very inspiring. That whatever happened here, whatever the process was, it was a really necessary one. Like there needs to be that uh, reconciliation between Australian museums and art galleries and any institution um, and Yongle people, Aboriginal people around the country. So anything that came out of this was going to be better you know, it was going to be a step forward, and I think there's been some really lovely step forwards. Uh, an outcome from this event was to perhaps start work on what we are all calling the Makarata Resolution. A major point in this resolution will be that our future working with people in Mellingimby will be done in an, quote, an unhurried time, so that deadlines that are imposed by Ballander or outsiders will not be the driving force. It will be more about cooperating with community members. And it's to also try to, in the future, assist people at Mellingimi in a whole range of activities. And that includes art, the ranger program, all the things here that people are concerned about that have to do with their cultural heritage. You know, has unhurried time. It's made up of sounds of children playing, of silences. To you, know, silence is not rude. Of laughter, of families gathering around weaving as they are weaving, splitting the pendants. It's a valuable gift to lose. The profound element that was taken from my people of this country, that's what is worth. It's more than gold and silver. It is embedded in a waraka. It is embedded that signifies who we are, the holiness. <coughs> each clan nation through that yin and yang, dua and yiriya connection that holds everything together, that Magara representation that you have seen is part of this. That's part of who we are. I guess what we need to understand all here is to get into the point of preservation, how we can preserve that before talking about money. All of us here sitting around 
have brought your heart to be here in this fertile land to talk about the significance of what's been taken away. What particular objects and stuff you have in the museums, not only in Australia but the global sector as well. Here I would like to see the core foundation that we can implement and put together and make it happen so that near future our children will see it's like all of us sitting down here, we walk towards that empty horizon out there. We're talking about what we are here. But out there in that empty horizon, we finally reach our destiny in our lives. You know? The prosperity we will build and live for the forthcoming generation, that they will see what we are reshaping restructuring, regaining in today's present day.